darkness trembles in your holy light, that every eye will see Jesus our God, great and mighty to be praised.
We're so glad to have you this morning and have, have to have you out on this Resurrection Day Sunday. Praise God. This is, you know, Passover in the Jewish calendar. Um, the church, the Western church calls it Easter because the King Jimmy translators translated the uh, Greek word Paschal, Easter, which is really Ishtar from the Greek. It's not even in the Bible. Hallelujah. And uh, they did that because by that time, the, the Druids had celebrated uh, uh, Ishtar, we got us a fertility, and they, the church at Rome had consolidated those dates, and they, so they called it Easter, and uh, which is it's really not the correct translation. I do this every year. I say this every year. How do they? We celebrate Resurrection Day. Now, if you hear me say Easter, it's my post on Facebook. Happy Easter! Don't go freaking out. All right, they're not, they're not meaning we're celebrating the Greek goddess fertility. All right, but we celebrate Resurrection Day. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus is Lord. Can somebody say Jesus is Lord? Praise God. We're so happy to have you this morning. Happy that Jesus is Lord and that we're with us. Praise God. And we're going to have a good time today in the Lord. Amen. A couple of announcements. One is this Wednesday night, I won't be here. Um, I wasn't here last Sunday, but I was at a board meeting for a, a church I'm on the board with. We had the annual meeting. And, and so I stayed over to preach Sunday morning for Pastor Cook. And, uh, and uh, y'all had a good time with Brother Jeff. Hallelujah. And I heard good things. Praise the Lord. And then uh, this coming Sunday, Wednesday, this coming Wednesday, we won't be here. Uh, we're all off the spring break, so we're taking off. We, we have not been anywhere uh, to stay somewhere other than go and see family or something for two years. So we're going for, a week, for the week. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My toes heal, so I can go to the beach. Hallelujah. Toes healed and I got it. Amen. Hallelujah. So, but the good news is that on Wednesday night, for the first time since the doctors tried to nail its coffin closed, Dr. Bill is going to be ministering in the Wednesday night service. Praise God. Hallelujah. And, uh, you know, they, they had the nails out. And they were, they were, you know, I think a couple guys came in with, with, with four-inch screws and, and power drivers. They were going to just really... Put that rascal in there. Yeah. Have what now? You had to run them off. Praise God. Hallelujah. I mean, you know, uh, praise God. So he'll be ministering. Amen. You'll hear his voice strong. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. See, y'all most of y'all know or have heard me say in the time past, when I first got saved down WBZQ Christian Radio in Greenville, AM on the uh, 10 something on the AM down in Greenville, North Carolina. We had Brother Copeland come on to preach, and right after Brother Copeland, this, this local guy, and then after that, Brother Hagen. The local guy happened to be Bill Bailey. And um, when he came to visit the church, I wasn't even here the first Sunday he visited. The next Sunday I came, came back, and I was back, and he came, and I said, Did you used to be on the radio? Yep. I used to listen to you when I first got saved. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. So come out Wednesday night. Don't stay home. You won't get, get a treat. Praise the Lord. And then, um, you know, of course, next Sunday we'll be back. Praise God. Amen. Uh, let's go ahead and receive our Sunday morning tithe and offering. You know, look, we think about raising your hand. Uh, ushers are now to assist you. Also, you can go ahead and send your electronic payment right now in Jesus' name to PayPal, Square Cash. And um, glory to God, that's the only two means we're doing it. Square Cash and PayPal. You can send that on in. Glory to God. And of course, we do take cash and check. We haven't stopped doing that. Hallelujah. Uh, when we first started this electronic means we thought, you know, somebody would give every once in a while, but now we got about 40% of the congregation gives that way all the time. Yeah, they just, you know, they're like, I don't have to remember the check, look. Hallelujah. Which really helps when they forget the check, look. Hallelujah. Great stuff. We're so glad to have you with us and those joining on Facebook and and I, I see some old friends from high school out there. Good to see you guys, have you guys with us this morning. We're glad to have you. Hallelujah. All right. You got your offerings ready? What did Jesus say about giving? He said, give, and it shall be given unto you. How? Good measure. Press down. Shaken together. Running over. Men will give unto your bosom. Amen. And why does God give us the power to get wealth? That we may establish his covenant in the earth. God wants to have the church in a position so they can fund the gospel all over the world. Amen. So we can we can send forth missionaries, we can send forth ministers, and let them bring light to the nations. Glory to God. 
Can you say amen? Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the tithe and the offering that's brought into the storehouse. We thank you for the needs of the ministry are met. They were able to minister life throughout all the earth. And that people are brought into the kingdom. People are set free and delivered through the power of the gospel. And that we're able to preach and share that good news with humanity. Because we're here because people fund the gospel. In Jesus' name, we have, everybody agree with that by saying amen. Amen. Praise God. At the uh, end of the uh, ministry part of the service, we'll receive the Lord's table. So we keep that in mind. And so don't, don't go running out unless you have to. Today's Brother Benny's birthday. He's 76. Hallelujah. Glory to God. 76 years young. Hallelujah. I'm going to tell you, you get a certain age, and, and people are older than you, sound young. Hallelujah. Uh, I, I get the big 6-0 in August of this year. So, I know, 70 sounds young. You know, used to you think 70. Man, they're ancient. Yeah, you know, I mean, they're, they're about crippled. You know, that 70 sounds young, baby. Hallelujah. That's spring chicken age. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. All righty. Time for children's church and preschool. Go to your class at this time. Miss Janie's waiting on you. Glory to God. And the rest of you, go ahead and get your Bibles out and open them up to the second chapter of the book of Galatians. I went totally old school today. Yeah. <clears throat> no iPad. You know, some, there's sometimes I just wish I was in still old school all the time. I just you got my new... Uh, retro Kenneth Hagen Bible, Hallelujah! Got that in glory. I wore my old one out. And they didn't, and they didn't make it anymore at the time. So they just restarted making them uh, years later, and I'm excited. Hallelujah! I got mine. Oh, also, those of you who went to that Bible study, we have gotten the study guides in. So next Sunday we will distribute to those who didn't get them yet. And uh, praise the Lord! He can say glory. The, the back order finally came in. At, you know, two and a half months later than we thought it should, but it's here. Glory. Hallelujah. Praise God. This morning we're ministering on the subject, I am or was blank with him. That's not for a cuss word. Okay? You know, there are certain things about the resurrection. And we see, you know, when we talk about the resurrection, we, we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. But there is a reason that the resurrection has so much meaning to the church. It's not that just Jesus was raised from the dead. It's not just that we celebrate the fact that he's alive. It's not just the fact that, you know, he's, he's up, he's alive, he's at the right hand of the Father. There is a specific and significant reason that the resurrection has meaning to us. Can you say amen? If it was just an event that we talked about and said, oh, glory, yeah, Jesus was raised from the dead, hallelujah. And that was the end of it. Well, we're still going to hell. It is the fact that because of Jesus uh, came to the earth, because he was crucified, because he was buried, because he was resurrected, because he is now alive unto God and sitting at the right hand of the Father, we can have life. Amen? You know, you know the, the Bible says, you know, the, the thief came, comes, not, but not for to kill, still and destroy in John 10, 10. I have come that they might have life, but to have it more abundantly. The word life in the Greek is zoe, which means now you understand when you study uh, uh, Greek words, there was a, what they come referred to as classical Greek usage. In other words, it's secular usage. How it's used in, in Greek culture and Greek language. Then, then, then there is a Septuagint usage, where they took the Old Testament scriptures of Hebrew and Chaldean and translated them into Greek. And, and you know how they use Greek words to correspond to, uh, and this is where some of the words began to evolve, okay, into a theological meaning. How you use this word, to, to translate a Hebrew. You know, maybe the Greek word for uh, shalom. You know, the Hebrew word shalom and whatever Greek word they use to translate peace. Now that, that Greek word that, that within secular Greek may have one meaning, now it takes on a theological concept. Okay? And so we get over into the New Testament and, we, and these Greek words, you know, they had, they had the classical, they had the Septuagint usage. And even when writing New Testament, understanding New Testament usage of the Greek words, those words had taken on that theological connotation from the translation of the, of the Septuagint. So now it carries a richer, deeper meaning. Zoe uh, is one of those words that took on a, a theological uh, meaning and perspectives because of, of how it's translated in Septuagint and how it was used in the New Testament. Okay, So if you go back and just say, well, the Greek word Zoe means this, and you get it in, in the context of classical Greek usage, it's not going to carry this meaning. But in theological, 
uh, perspectives and understanding, we come up with this. Zoe in the Greek New Testament means life in the absolute sense. Life in the manner that the Father has it. Remember, God is life. Three things in the book of 1 John. God is life. God is life. God is love. Okay? And so, uh, you know, life in the absolute sense, life in the manner that God possesses it, the same life that the Father has in himself and the incarnate Son has in himself, that life which the Son has now given unto us. Hallelujah. Can you say glory to God? But I have come that they might have life in the absolute sense. What do you mean? The same kind of life that the Father has in Him. Praise God. Can you say glory? Hallelujah. And have it to the full. Praise God. Amen. Glory to God. And so, we, we come to this. Jesus came to the earth and walked the earth, you know, and, and prophesied even as... Uh, I can't think. Yeah. You know, I don't know if this, this lack of dignity or what. I just got to get out of the cook. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You know, some days you just wish you could go back to the pre-necktie issues in the early 1900s. Well, anyway. But Jesus came to identify with us. The whole, the whole gospel centers on identification. Christ identifying with us in our sin and paying the price and carrying the penalty of that sin. And we identifying with him in his life, his death, his burial, his resurrection, ascension, and seating by the Father. It is an identification. Okay? Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. And I, the title of my sermon is, I am slash was blank with him. I'm going to fill in the blank several times. Okay? This is one of those, you know, A, B, C, D, E, and F, or all of the above. This is one's going to be all of the above. Hallelujah. Galatians 2.20 says this. Uh, uh, Jeremiah 15 is not going to work. That's where I was about, about Jeremiah 15. Like, that really helps. Okay. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20 says, I am. Now, what the NIV says, I have been crucified with Christ. See, the number one, we were crucified with Christ. Man was an alienation against God. We were without God, without hope in this world. We were enmity against God. We were resistant to God. Our hearts, Satan was our spiritual father. We're all the children of God. Well, Jesus said, you're of your father, the devil. I'll go with Jesus instead of somebody's theological concept that's not biblically accurate. You are of your father, the devil, and the lust of your father you will fulfill. Hallelujah. Well, see, that's the state of man he is. But when you come to Jesus, you're crucified with him. Can you say amen? So Paul writes, says, I have been, according to the NIV, have been crucified with Christ. Oh, glory to God. You know, I didn't have to go to the cross. He went for me. And some of you remember the book. I don't remember the author, but, you know, the book, and, and, and of course, the movie they did back in the 50s or so called The Tale of Two Cities. And, uh, you know, this guy's in love with this girl. She doesn't love him. She loves another guy. And, and that guy is, is, commits a crime. His, his, his penalty is death. And I believe it was in France. You know, the France, you're guilty until proven innocent. That's Napoleonic law. You're guilty until proven innocent. All right? Uh, so, you know, they beat you first. Uh, tell you they're sorry later. Okay? And, uh, you know, but this guy loves this woman so much that on the way, when they put him into the, to the, uh, the, the, uh, the carriage to take him to be executed, he slips in, takes the guy's place, because the guy right has his hood on and gets the guy gets the guy out, takes his place, he goes and is executed in his stead. And the guy gets to live happy ever after with the girl. Okay? I, I just don't even remember who the author of that book was. Dickens. Okay. All right. The Tale of Two Cities. And uh, which is really a parallel, and as, as Jesse's high school English teacher said, who's the Christ figure? You know, every story has the Christ figure in it. Well, that story, the Christ figure is a guy who loved the girl so much he was willing to die. Her happiness, her, her joy. Jesus left his estate in heaven. He came, was born in a manger. As we preach at Christmas all the time, the, the, the manger has no meaning without the cross. If he's just a babe born, and most people are not offended by the babe in the manger. The, the story of Jesus in the manger doesn't offend many people. It's a baby. But the child grew up. The child became a man. The child walked the earth for three and a half years as a man, anointed by God, hallelujah. And then he went to the cross, 
to be because as John the Baptist said when he saw him coming, behold the Lamb of God which takes away the sin of the world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Man was alienated from God and separated from God. There was no path. There was no path of redemption for mankind. Man could be atoned for, but he could not be redeemed. He could be covered. He couldn't be reconciled. Every year they would offer sacrifices and shed the blood of bulls and goats and sprinkle the ashes of heaven. And they would sanctify the, their flesh for one year. Kept them clean for one year. Oh, thank God. Thank God that wasn't the end of the story. Hallelujah. That was the promissory note. That was the holding tank. That was holding things and stay until the one that prophesied in Genesis 3.15 that the seed of the woman shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. As Jerry Savelle used to say, that's old Texas for he's going to come and bust your head, boy. Satan's looking for this seed of a woman to come and bust his head. Jesus came. And we now have added on to that part the blood of bulls and ghosts and the sprinkling of the ashes of a heifer sanctified to the purifying of the flesh. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? Paul writes, and I, and I, can, almost, I can almost feel the intensity of his pen, of him saying this as he, as he writes this here. You know, uh, I have been crucified with Christ. He went to the cross, and when he went to the cross, it's just like Paul went to the cross. It's just like Ed went to the cross. It's just like, you know, Brother Bill went to the cross and Jeff went to the cross. It's just like Larry. It's like everybody in this room went to the cross. It is. It's like all humanity went with the cross with Christ. We're crucified with Him because we deserve the penalty that He carried. And He went in our stead. He completely identified with us. As 2 Corinthians chapter 5 says, he says that he who knew no sin was made sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Glory to God. I said glory to God. He became what we were. I know this blows people away, but I can give you Bible so we can come with this. All rights. It's this triumphant tone. I have been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, see, not just that I have been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet, not I. Christ liveth in me. And the life that I now live in the flesh, hallelujah, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. I was crucified with him. Now I'm alive. But it's really not just me. It's Christ in me. What does the Bible say? This is the joy. This is what we're looking for. Christ in you. The hope of glory. Hallelujah. The resurrected one. Taking up residence on the inside of us. I heard T.L. Osborne one time. He was on the 700 Club with Pat Robertson. And... um. Somebody said something, and he, he blew everybody in the audience out of the water. Brother Roberts, you know, was talking about, you know, religions that believe in reincarnation. He looks at Brother he and says, you don't believe in uh, reincarnation, right? And Brother Osborne looked over at him and says, yes, I do. This is live. This is the 700 Club. This is live television. They're, they didn't have the five-second delay. They couldn't cut to a commercial. They don't do commercials. Or back then they did and, of course, you hear the, the holy <sighs> sucking of air in the congregation. A Volkswagen got sucked off the, the road out there in front of it. It was such a low pressure created. And he looks over and says, Brother Robertson, uh, Brother Robertson goes, Brother Osborne does, that is the gospel. Christ reincarnated in us. Now, we, not in the sense of Hindu religion, but Christ being born in us. See? It just, it just messed everybody up for a second. Why? It's, that's the whole thing. God taking up residence. You being born of God. Christ coming in. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man open that door, I and my father will come in and sup with him, make our abode with him. 
Paul's writing, I was crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Hallelujah. I live, I live. Amen. Remember that old, old, old hymn of song? He lives, he lives. Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks to me. The lost I have, but never away. And then the, the chorus, it finishes up. And, and we, we rejoice today because he lives in my heart. What a, this is the whole cross of what the gospel is. There's so many little, if I say, in comparison to this, other things that God wants you to have. God wants you well. God wants you to prosper. God wants you blessed. But I am telling you, the very core, the very thing, middle of all the gospel, the heart of the gospel is Christ in you. The hope for me. You were crucified with him. He hung on the cross. And as far as heaven is concerned, Ed hung on the cross. Ed paid the price for sin. Ed's sin was removed because the price was paid. I didn't do it. Jesus did it for me. Amen. Hallelujah. In Romans 6, 6. Glory to God. You have to excuse me. I'm breaking back. I am a new Bible. It's you know, all writing to it. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed. Henceforth, we should not serve sin. I want to be honest with you. When people come up and tell me, you know, that they're under grace and they can do whatever they want to do, they can fornicate, they can drink, they can smoke dope, they can run around, they can do whatever. It doesn't matter because they're under grace. I'm thinking, man, he has, I'm not to serve sin. I've been, I, I'm, I've been crucified with Him. I'm set free. I don't henceforth serve sin. I serve God, glory to God. I live in the power of God, glory to God. I, sin is not my appetite. Righteousness is my appetite. We Walking with God is my appetite. That sin was nailed to the cross. Jesus took, according to the book of Colossians, the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, taking it out of the way and nailing it to the cross, glory to God. Why well, don't I want to go pull them off and live in them? I was crucified with Him. But now I'm alive. Glory to God. Alive unto God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I was buried with Him. Romans 6, 4, Therefore we are buried with Him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness. So we did our teaching a couple of, uh, a year and a half or so ago on the life and teachings of Paul. Um, this phrase right here, newness of life, in the, in the Greek means a new sphere altogether. We're to walk in a new place altogether. We walk in a completely different place in Christ. We don't walk in the flesh. Let me tell you something, folks. If you think, if, if your, your goal is to, I'm saved. I've been declared righteous. I'm under grace. I can live any way I want to live. You're not walking what God has for you. Now, I'm not going to sit here and debate whether you get to go to heaven or not. You're not walking what God has for you. You're called to walk in a whole new sphere altogether. You're called to walk in righteousness. You're called to walk above. You're called to be the head and not the tail, above only and not beneath. You're called to live out of the life that's on the inside of you, this new life that Paul, Paul wrote about over in Galatians. He said, I, was cruci I have been crucified with Christ. I live, yet, ne yet not I. Uh, nevertheless, I live, yet not I. Christ liveth in me in the life I now live in the flesh. I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. What? I'm now living like Christ wants me to live. Out of that life that I now have in me, that's how I've been crucified with him. I was buried with him. I went to the cross with him. I went to the grave with him. Not literally, but in substitution. So I wouldn't really have to. He didn't come to make it easy for us to sin. He came to make it easy for us to live righteously. Amen. Galatians 2.12. Glory be to God. Somebody say, glory be to God. Somebody say, hallelujah. If you're an old word of faith, charismatic, say, Shunda. If you're an old Pentecostal, just do the Pentecostal chicken. Glory to God. I've done it all. Hallelujah. 
Galatians chapter 2. Wrong verse. I wrote it down wrong. No! I don't write that. I don't write that. Hallelujah. Well, anyway, we're buried with him. <laughs> How I wrote the I mean, I completed That's why I need to keep it on my iPad. I was getting so excited, I wrote down the wrong scripture. Well, glory to God. Hallelujah. We're buried with him. Amen. Let, let me look back at Romans real quick. Maybe maybe I, I got it off the uh, chain there. All right. Yeah, that's where I was to start with, Romans 6, 4. We were buried with him in Colossians 2, 12. Colossians 2, 12. That's what I, I, I wrote relation to, it's Colossians. Sorry. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jeff. Glory to God. Buried with him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God, who hath raised him from the dead. Listen. Buried with him in baptism, wherein you are also risen with him. Hallelujah. Through the faith of the operation of the Son of God, <coughs> who raised him from the dead. Which leads us into our next one. So I have been, A, crucified with him. B, buried with him. C, raised with him. Glory to God. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. It wasn't enough, just enough to go and pay the price for the sin. It wasn't just enough to be crucified with Him. It wasn't just enough to be buried with Him. We had to be raised with Him. Glory to God. Being, and, and He raised us. Hallelujah. And you being dead in your sins and some circumcision of your flesh, happy, quick, and old King Jimmy for made alive together with Him having forgiven all your trespasses, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. Glory to God. Thank God He took it away. I'm not going to go get that stuff and bring it down and say, well, He took He took living in sin away from me. Oh, but I'm under grace. So I'm going to pull that back off and go live in it. No, He took it. He carried it. He paid the price for it. He nailed it to the cross. Judgment came. Glory to God. And now I've been raised, what, to newness of life as we read before. Glory to God. I walk in that whole new sphere altogether with God. The sphere of walking with God. The sphere of overcoming the enemy. The sphere of being free from sin. Glory to God. He whom the Son has set free is free indeed. Glory to God. Can you say amen? Hallelujah! When the Son is set free, it's free indeed. I care not to find ways to live out of the old man. Put off the old man and put on the new, which after God has created in righteousness and true holiness. Put him off. Don't excuse his behavior. Put him off. Don't pull a Flip Wilson and say, the devil made me. The devil made me do it, honey. Geraldine. That was his alter ego. The, show. the devil made me do it, honey. You remember you remember Geraldine, don't you? Yeah. Geraldine was a sight. I mean, I don't know if Medea has anything on Geraldine. Hallelujah. We were raised in 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Can y'all rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory? I do believe there are times we get so caught up with how much we can get away. Listen, the, the new narrative in the church does not bring praise out of our hearts. I've seen too many people find so excited about the fact they can get away with stuff and still go to heaven. And that's not the purpose. The fact you've been liberated, the fact that you're free, the fact that sin no longer shall lord it over you. How does it lord over us now if we let it? How do we let it? We go do it. And say it doesn't matter. There's no consequence to it. I don't need to repent. There's no consequence. That's not the Bible. That's not the gospel. The gospel is you've been liberated from the power of sin. That is grace. Grace is you've been liberated from the power of it. And you are now empowered by the power of God. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. <clears throat> John writes to the church in 1 John. We, we, we say it this way, the greater one lives in me. 
Glory to God, the grace from the power of sin. Paul says, look, don't yield your members as servants of unrighteousness to death. <laughs> you see, you, can, you, can give, you can't give that to an unregenerated person. They can't help but yield their members to unrighteousness. When you're born again, when you identify with Christ and have been crucified with Him and buried with Him and now raised with Him, there's a new power on the inside. The dominion of sin, the dominion of Satan has been broken. And as Jesus said in John 8, 44, you're of your father, the devil, and the lust of your father you will fulfill. Now we no longer have Satan as our father because we were born again. That's why Jesus said, ye must be born again. Hallelujah. And we've passed from death unto life. And the nature of the Father has entered into us. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We've been reconciled with the God. At one time we were aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. We were aliens from the covenants of God. Hallelujah. We were without God, without hope in this world. Glory to God. But when the fullness of time came, Jesus came. Glory to God. And he broke down that partition between God and man. Hallelujah. And became the sin sacrifice. Became the substitute. Praise God. Became our all in all. Glory to God. And when he was raised up, he raised us up with him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That even when we were dead in our trespasses and sins, glory to God, He made us alive together with Him and raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Like can you say amen? We're now heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. And I just left my notes. They got left behind somewhere. Oh my God. Hallelujah. I've been raised up with Him. The life of God's now in me. It penetrates my very being. Praise God. My spirit man's alive unto God. Hallelujah. The Word of God renews my mind. And the very Holy Ghost He's given unto me keeps my body, praise God, with the seal of redemption. I've been raised up with Him. I reign in this life as a king. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I just covered the next two points. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I was raised with Him. And I got that Romans 1 Corinthians 6, 14. Hallelujah. And God hath raised both up the Lord. And we also raise, and will also raise us up by His own power. Ephesians 2, 6, we're seated with Him. Romans 5, 17. You can leave right now and say, Woo! Then God bless today. For what? Romans 5 17. Let's back up verse 16. And it's not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift. For the judgment was by one to condemnation, but the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. For if one man's offense, death reigned by one, that is Adam. We're talking about Adam there. Much more. I like the way Paul writes. Paul doesn't speak in, you know, these melancholy tones of uh, evil. Well, you know, one of these days when we all get to heaven, we'll get to rejoice in the sweet mind by. Uh, if when the roll is called over yonder, I'm there. Oh, my. And Paul writes, We're by one man's offense, as Adam. Death reigned by one. Much more. Much more. Much more. They which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. Reign. We are to be reign. We're to be kings. We're to be victors. We're to reign. We're to reign in life. Stop having life reign on us and reign on life. Hallelujah. Or over life. Life wants to R A I N on you. Defeat, gloom, despair, agony on me. So you can be a co the co writer of the Hee Haw song. Some of y'all remember Hee Haw. Gloom, despair, and agony on me. Deep, dark depression, it says of misery. If it weren't bad luck, I'd have no luck at all. Gloom, despair, and agony on me. And then you were saying, if she met another, she was gone. All right. 
Some of y'all remember that. All these years later, you know, and I'm Junior Sam, BR549, you know, selling his cars. What, what, what a life reigning on you, R-A-I-N, reigning defeat, reigning sickness, reigning, you know, uh, calamity, reigning all kinds of stuff. But it's having, having life reigning on you, you're to reign, R-E-I-G-N, over. You reign because greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. <clears throat> you reign because as Paul declares in his great triumphal procession, you know, uh, who can separate us or what can separate us from the love of God? Can principality or power or life or death or things present or things to come or any other thing cannot separate us from the love of God through Christ Jesus. Glory to God. Paul goes and says, we're more than conquerors through him that loved us. Hallelujah. He didn't say we were conquerors. He said we were more than conquerors. This isn't sliding in by the skin of your teeth. This isn't barely making it. We're the reign in life. Amen. We're to reign in life. Glory to God. Thy one, Jesus Christ. Jesus conquered the enemy. Jesus overcame the enemy. Hallelujah. 2 Timothy 2.12. Lord, we got 2 Timothy 2.12. Hey, how you doing, buddy? Uh, every, every once in a while, somebody pops in at this moment. Hey, you can see you out there. Glad to have you. Lord, we got 2 Corinthians 2.12. If we suffer... We shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he will deny us. If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful. He cannot deny himself. Amen. Verse 11, go back to verse 11. It is a faithful saying, if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. Amen. Now, notice he will reign with him. How did we suffer? We suffered by his son. Only, only persecution, only good things suffer as suffer persecution. We not suffer sickness, disease. Uh, we're, we suffer persecution for his name's sake. Amen. He did say we'll suffer persecution for his name's sake. But we reign with him. Which reign? You've got authority. You've got authority over the R A I N of life. Reigning defeat on you, reigning sickness on you, reigning poverty on you, reigning to uh, Calamity. You've got authority over that because you reign in this life as a king. We live in a whole new sphere. All of you remember, we raise a newness of life. Hallelujah. And then 1 Corinthians 15, 57. We're going to go there and we're going to close. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 15, 57. Remember, we better back up. Let's go to 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. Now, you understand in New Testament terminology, oftentimes the word sleep means die or death. Remember, Jesus said, Lazarus is asleep. And they went, huh? Huh? Yeah. Uh, Peter, you know, that but I'm going to tell you something. Pastors, ministers, you think you got problems with your staff. Try putting together the team Jesus had. Are you here? I mean, you got, you got, uh, I mean, even when he's, even when he's at the very end of everything and John's laying over there, Peter said, Peter's not happy about it. <clears throat> Jesus is there, Peter says, you know, tells him how he's going to die in the end. And he's like, well, what, what, what about him? Jesus said, if I, if I would, but he lives until I come back. What's that? You, you do what I say to him. Ain't got time for this in-house brawl. I mean, three and a half years and Peter's still jealous. He became a great disciple. In the great apostle. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. We should not all sleep. We should, we should all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, the dead have, shall be raised incorruptible and shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on the incorruption. 
this mortal she must put on immortality. So when this corruptible, corruptible, shall I put on incorruption, and this mortal shall I put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. Why? Because it simply told you what sin was. Now, because we're on the New Testament, grace does not mean sin is not sin. We just now have the remedy. We have the answer. Adultery didn't stop being sin because grace came. Murder didn't stop being sin because grace came. Fornication didn't stop being sin because grace came. Grace came to give you the answer to victory over. The law simply told you what it was and gave you no out. It was so stringent that if you committed one transgression of the law, you would go through the whole thing. The over 3,000 plus ordinances and commandments. You were guilty of all of them. And the new covenant. Glory to God. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Can you say amen? But thanks. You know, Paul lays all this out. And goes, but thanks be to God. Which... Giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Sin, death, it's been broken. It's been broken through Jesus Christ. Now we shall victory. We have victory. Our victory is that we win over sin. We win over sickness. We win over defeat. Glory to God. We don't have the thrill of victory and the agony of defeat. You know, ABC Wide World of Sports, hallelujah. Jesus went through the agony, agony of defeat to give us the thrill of victory. Hallelujah. He identified with us. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And now we can shout and we can rejoice with Paul, but thanks be to God. Thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. There's another place that Paul writes, and he says this, now, thanks be to God, which always causes us to triumph. Can you say amen? He always causes us to triumph. I, I like the fact that God wants us triumphant. Can you say amen? Paul, God wants us living in victory. Glory to God. God doesn't want us living in defeat. Jesus did not come to get people so we can all get to heaven and just, I mean, get, get run over and rushed out the whole time we're waiting to get there. Can you say amen? Somebody say Glory. Hallelujah. I'm looking for something real quick. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen, 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 amen. And glory. It always causes us to triumph. I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad at the end of it all. When everything, Satan he pulls out and does everything if you include your kitchen sink and the dirty dishwater in it. That I can stand victorious. I can stand triumphant. I can stand as the resurrected child of God. An heir of God and a joint heir of Christ. Jesus messed with their theology. Every chance he got. He just messed them up. Remember one time they came and he said, you know, he said something. They said, uh, you know, pick up stones to kill him. Because he said, for Abraham was, I am. He said, why are you casting the stone? They said, well, you may just say equal to God. He said, have you not read it, heard it read? Ye are gods. And they're all, they, just, they left them dumbfounded. They had to go off and have a theological debate because he just messed them up. And we need to have more theological uh, mess-ups today. Jesus did not come just so you go to heaven and live defeated the rest of the time you as a matter of fact, Deuteronomy says we'll have days of heaven on the earth. Can you say amen? Days of heaven on the earth. Glory to God. He giveth us the victory through Jesus Christ. They overcome came by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. Amen? Are you here? This is the victory that overcometh the world. God's dealt heaven in the ministry. 
I am telling you that I have been, I was or have been crucified with him, buried with him. I am raised with him. I am seated with him. I am reigning with him. Hallelujah. And I have victory in him. Glory to God. Can you say amen? Glory to God. Thank God for Resurrection Sunday. Thank God for celebrating the resurrection. <clears throat> but I'm going to tell you something. We're celebrating the resurrection because every day of our life is governed by the fact that we live victorious through Jesus Christ. Glory to God. That we identified with Him in His, burial, his death, His burial, His resurrection, His ascension, His seating. And now we live out as His body in the earth. The victorious life that He came to produce in us. That He came to give us life and more abundantly. We live that life now. In the flesh. In Jesus' name. Bless you. Speak life over you. If you're watching now, you've tuned in, you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord. Pray with me. There is power in the blood of Jesus. God has already got your name in the Lamb's Book of Life. We know that every sinner's name is in the don't get, don't get upset with this week. If you die without Christ, your name is blotted out. But God loves you so much, He's already put your name in the book waiting for you to accept Christ. You don't have to go put your... He doesn't go and write your name in the book when you, when you accept Jesus. It's already there. The only time the pen in the Lamb's Book of Life is used again is when somebody dies without Christ. They get blotted out. That's how much God loves you. Anybody had to put your knee down ahead of time. You're invited. Come and dine, the master call. Come and dine. You may see that Jesus stay with all the time. He who fed the multitudes turned the water into wine. To the hungry now call. Come and dine. Come. Come let the, res the, the crucifixion, the burial, the resurrection, the ascension, the seating, and the reigning in life take place in your heart. As you accept Christ and forgive you. Would you pray this prayer with me this morning? Say, Dear God in heaven, I come to you lost. I need to experience the new birth. Romans says, If I'll confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in my heart, raise him from the dead, I'll be saved. I confess Jesus as my Lord. I believe in my heart you raised him from the dead. Now accept the redemptive work of Christ in my life. In Jesus' name. Amen. May now follow the with the Holy Ghost. That that work of God in me take place. I experience a whole new realm. It's praying in the Spirit. Another language. That that book take place. In Jesus' name. Pray that prayer. In it, it, and we'll reconcile to God. Text us, post on Facebook, call us, find some form of communication. You know, email us at uh, office at fbc.org. That's faith and faith church. Office at fbc.org. We can call you back, write you back, email you back. We just want to know that you receive Jesus. God bless you. Celebrate this new day as the resurrection day. All of you. So we meet again. Remember this. This is the victory that has come to the world. Even our faith. God bless you. See you again soon. Jesus is